Hi, friends, welcome back to Alice Play World, bringing you some more Heroes of the Storm. Today we're playing Jim Rayner with what is basically the build that I use for rank play all the time. Highly effective, a lot of fun. Let's get into it. Anytime you're ready. Welcome to the Tomb of the Spider Queen. Enemy team Johanna, Nazebo, Falsat, ETC, and Vala. Friendly team Zeratul, Rexar, Murky, Gaso, and Rayner. What is this? All right, this should be interesting. Um, okay, let's see what they got. Joe, false is gonna be a problem. Vol is gonna be a problem, and we are gonna try to gank some people. No healers, so interesting enough. Okay, so the first time we're gonna be picking up is gonna be give me more. See some marksmen. It's a legitimate choice, but we do not have a healer. I want to stay alive, so that's gonna make our adrenaline rush healing increase by uh, fifty percent. That is our trade. We can't activate it, but after we get below thirty percent health, we heal dramatically. Of course, there's a long cooldown, so you wanna make sure you're keeping an eye when you have that and when you don't to do certain engagements. Our W ability is called Inspire. You basically give a 30% bonus attack speed for 6 seconds to nearby ally, uh, to yourself, and you give nearby allies half of that. Our Q ability, Penetrating Round, deals damage and knocks the enemy back. And of course, our uh, Advanced Optics. Uh, this is an actual trait, sorry, I don't know if I said the other one. Uh, the, the Adrenaline Rush is our E ability, which we can't click on. Our trait, basic attack range, is 20% further than any other range heroes. You see 10% further than other heroes, which means we can also gather XP from further away than normal. And we're going to be able to basically actually jump here on false set, try not to body block our friendly Rex. We're taking a lot of damage. He's actually going to almost get taken down, but you do enough damage to sort of just basically dissuade this. And then let's go ahead and, and bait a little bit. I could have probably gotten the kill on false set there, but I saw ATC moving for a little bit of a power slide action. I didn't want to go too crazy. So let's go ahead and just go back to her lane, get a little bit of healing. It looks like Misha running into a little bit of trouble there. She is going to take a lot of damage. But of course, the main thing we want to do is actually get behind this false set if we can, because we're going to be forcing him to take a lot of damage. He already welled, which means any other damage that we do now is going to force him all the way back to lane, and that would be huge. It looks like we're going to jump here on ATC, waiting to bait the false set, because we do have a Zerazul right there. As soon as we run in here, we can uh, be able to shoot, basically poke him a couple times. Our activated healing is going to kick in, and false that is baited. He's going to take a lot of damage. Seriously, jumps in with the cleave, and that is his skill. You can see their adrenaline rush are really great for ganking. You can actually stay in lane a little bit longer, bait people in, and then as soon as it kicks in, they're like, oh no, this guy's not going to die, and they just proceed to completely roll over their faces. But this continue to poke ETC here. Again, force him back, because he's going to have to well pretty soon as well. Uh, really interesting partnership here with Rexor. I don't need to get... Uh, Caesar Marksman stack, so I might roam with uh, Zero Tool. I think that's what I'm going to do, actually, as the middle lane here. They did go for a gank on our friendly Gazel. He goes down. Zero Tool returning to lane for a moment. There those pick up the gems. Uh, I, by the way, I apologize if I called them gems for any reason. My friend has been calling them that when we play together, and it sort of just kind of stuck with me. So we're going to go ahead and return to lane just to make sure we're getting experience on all three lanes. Of course, Rexor leaves the bottom lane as we jump here on his evil. Doing a ton of damage. We're going to force him back really quickly. I don't remember that wall. Uh, might be coming out, but we do have Adrenaline Rush, so we can actually be really brave and continue to engage here, doing a ton of damage, forcing him back. There's the Adrenaline Rush, tons of damage coming down from Vala, and now we can actually switch on her, but I'm very low, so I'm just going to walk away. Hit up the healing wall before I run into trouble. Looks like Murky does go down there. Oh, man, I feel like I'm playing terrible today. I don't know. I feel slow and sluggish. Maybe it's because I actually rested for a full night of sleep. Night sleep last night, and I, I don't know how to handle it. We're returning here to the middle lane, to the bottom lane, to try to push this back a little bit. As you can see, the lane has been slightly shoved our direction. You see, need a little bit of attention here to clean up. Full set in the middle lane with Nasibo and Vala means ETC is by himself here, so we can be a little bit aggressive with our positioning to make sure we get those gems. See, I called him gems. <laughs> get those gems. Although I'd rather um, Rexer hold most of those because of the fact that he just, you know, we, that way we only need one hand in. I am going to rotate middle really quickly, see if we can get a drop here on uh, this enemy Nazebo, but it looks like he does walk away. Uh, false are going really deep. That might be an interesting kill. It doesn't look like it's going to be so, however, and we're just going to basically show... Oh, great engagement here. We're able to pick up the kill and see what... See, I am very slow. I didn't even realize he was there till the very last second. I am going to rotate top to make sure we're getting XP there as well. We could be slightly, uh, uh, we're slightly ahead of the enemy team, but we could be significantly ahead if we were paying attention to that positioning and make sure we're leeching XP, or at least soaking XP from every lane. So let's go ahead and do that, even though it's a little bit boring and not as exciting as fighting them in the middle lane as it looks like our friendly team continues to push, and Rex are, of course, on the amount. Murky coming back here to drop a puffer fish. Drop a puffer fish. He's gonna drop the. Pu okay, he's not gonna drop anything. So we're just gonna kill these guys manually. He does drop the puffer fish to do a little bit of siege damage. That's neat. And let's rotate back to the middle lane to assist here. It looks like Gasso poking a little bit, running into a little trouble. I'm actually just gonna go here and shoot and see in the face, trying to lure him back because I do see that Zeratul's there. So what I want to do is bait him uh, a little bit. Try to basically be like, oh no, can you wall me? Can you wall me? I think you could totally wall me if you if you came. Come on. I'm trying to appear brave and silly so that they come after me and then. 
There it goes. There to with a jump in a great cleave and just picks up the kill. I'm gonna shove Vala back to make sure he doesn't run into any trouble. And we set up the kill pretty well. And now uh, Gas is gonna be able to push that, so that means I'm gonna rotate to the bottom lane and try to get a kill here on this false set, who's really out of position. I think he already. Oh no, there is the battle roll. And we're really unable to pick up the kill, but we do secure the lane, pick up the yams. As I'm just gonna call them yams from now on. I hope you guys are on board with that. And we're gonna hand these in. See, when, when my friends start saying silly things, it's difficult for me because like it's already English. So it's a different language and uh, I just you know, and then it's really easy. I'm really inf uh, Influenced easily. So let's go ahead and pick up the killer on ball. We we're gonna get dragged back Our healing is gonna kick in right now. We're taking a lot of damage So we're gonna be forced back those spiders are gonna chase us However, we do run them into the minions and they stop pursuing us the next time we're gonna be picking up is Revolution Overdrive. Keep movement speed per inspired hero. The only option here is fight or flight But I don't feel like I need the healing that badly and the movement speed is really awesome in order to be able to stutter step and just chase people. You see, we guess you just jump in here and shoot false in the face a couple times. We do get hit by the hammer, but that does force him way back. And now we're going to have this thing starting to do a little bit of damage here on the towers. Hold totally on, want to get a little bit of experience here from killing the towers. See if we can beat these guys to the race of 10. You can see that we're doing pretty much a lot of damage here on Contested. As the Sebo comes out, we're going to jump on him with Zerat, who's doing a ton of damage. We pick up the kill almost immediately. Now Johanna forced to run back out of here. And of course, this spider continuing to siege down. So we're going to sit here and basically improve auto attack speed, make sure we get the tower kills. And that is going to put us really close to level 9. As I'm going to jump here on Johanna, doing a ton of damage. She's basically going to be forced back out of here. She does pop her D. And I'm just going to run in and collect the gems, if you will. And then just bully her out. Uh, the enemy team probably going to be back soon. As you can see, she's missing her Ws every which way she goes. I feel really bad for her. But we're able to harass a lot. Force the fight, get a little bit of siege damage, Murky securing those mercenary camps in the bottom lane. And now we're able to rotate to try to get a gank here on the bottom as it looks like false stat, a little bit out of position. Let's go ahead and go here in the bush, although he does seize us because I did not calculate the way that was going to return properly. But we should be able to give these guys a little bit of boost uh, as far as attack speed and we clear out the lane really quickly and now we have some siege pressure in the bottom lane. False is going to be forced to deal with that. We're going to try to basically come in here and fight this ETC. We still have the healing. I don't want it to proc yet, so I'm actually going to remove myself from that dangerous situation. Uh, maybe rotate the top because I want to make sure that we get another kill here with the zero tool of the time presents itself We're almost level 10 might as well try to soak that though So I will rotate if you see somebody will jump on him If not, I'm gonna go to the top lane and make sure that we're just getting the most XP that we can from every which lane So we can beat the enemy team to that level 10 get that XP advantage and maybe can force a fight while we have heroic abilities This is level 10 looking at their team comp. I think I'm gonna go for Rainer's Raiders the big difference here uh, as far as heroic ability choice, in my opinion, when you're playing Jimmy, is whether or not you want to do basically zoning and uh, damage to everybody or whether you actually want to take the time to um, pick a target out and kill them. I think if we kill Fawcett, this enemy team doesn't really have that much damage other than Vala. So I can actually lose my... Oh, that guy's going to die immediately. I can actually lose most of my damage on, uh, on Vala and kill her or basically force the fight against false it looks like we're gonna actually go in here well, I, I got split a little bit i wanted to go after vala especially some of the raiders they're gonna go after her and do a little bit of damage there and poking i'm actually gonna turn them back around against johanna try to do a little bit of damage maybe not the best opportunity great stun there by misha and that's gonna be a kill thanks to the raiders they're gonna continue to push on here and begin to attack etc and then just be a complete nuisance. So we're going to macro them back a little bit out of fort range. And then back in into ETC just to make sure we're doing as much damage as possible. And then of course pull back a little bit. And then they're going to run out. We do pick up another kill there on the Zeebo on the bottom lane. Let's go ahead and hand more gems in. <laughs> I'm definitely never going to. I'm going to say that like in a, in a different context. And, uh, and everybody's going to look at me and not say anything. Because it's like, oh, he's foreign. I guess he doesn't know how to say it. Uh, ta sets wise, we do have 10,000 hero damage. Guess with 12,000, rather impressive. Is he going laser? He's not going laser, he's going auto turret build. It looks the enemy team completely okay with letting him do that. We should push this middle forward because of the fact that we're at level 10, they don't have it yet, so might as well get a kill on it. And as he was gonna come here and probably land a wall, he does not. For the moment, we're just gonna harass him. It looks the enemy team about to get level 10. Let me go ahead and back up because that Johanna might come with a stun. She does pop her you really prematurely, though. That puts her in a lot of trouble, but she does manage to walk away at the last second. They're at level 10. Gotta watch out for that uh, mosh pit, which he does go. And, of course, we have uh, Strafe, Ravenous Spirit, and Stun. So we gotta watch out for all those. We're gonna save our Q for Nazebo in case he starts casting that Ravenous Spirit. i to make sure we take that down as fast as possible. So we're gonna just basically continue to sit here and trade. Murky doing a great job of grabbing Murkamps. And the enemy team not really doing much else. They might be wanting to hand in. But for the time being, we're doing pretty well. And, of course, Misha gathering those gems for um, for Rexar means that we can actually send her in poke, grab the gems, and not really risk of losing any. And we're just going to continue to be here. It looks like uh, Johanna wants to come in here. We're going to poke her a little bit just to dissuade the push. Zeradu coming in with a great VP. Let's go ahead and engage right there on Johanna. We're going to switch to 
this uh, Nazebo as fast as we can. And then, of course, we're going to put the ra ra Raiders on her, on him. That's going to secure the kill. And then, of course, switch here to Johanna. We can get the kill. Jumping here on Falsa to try to do as much damage as possible. Our healing kicks in. However, Vala doing a ton of damage. Uh, we can actually save them. <laughs> We could have saved them a little bit earlier. I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, so we can basically throw up EDC's ult. But we're going to be able to do a ton of damage. Our web weavers are going down. And we're going to force his way back. Again, I apologize for the game. But I feel like I'm not as smooth as I should be. But uh, it seems to be doing well enough. As we do have 14,000 heal damage done. The next time we're going to be picking up double barrel. Penetrating ring against a second charge. That's going to help us interrupt the Nazeev ultimate. That ETC ultimate if we see it. And of course it's going to build up better in the end. Let's go ahead and jump here on Vala. She's going to take a lot of damage. She knows Zeratul is coming. We don't have healing so I can't be too cute. Zeratul is going to do a little bit of damage. And I'm going to be able to basically back them away from him. Save his life. Our healing does kick in. However the cooldown immediately used. Because of the fact that we were so low. It looks like we did have a pretty decent push here in the middle lane. The bottom lane we are. We did get a fort. And false set somehow died, so that's all bonuses. It looks like uh, Zeratu running into a little bit of trouble there. I want to babysit him because he's uh, by far the most damage we have. We're going to try to engage here on this ETC, just basically harass him a little bit, poke him, and send him his way so he doesn't harass our Rexar, who has 10 gems, and of course we don't want him to die. The bottom uh, push still going pretty strong. We do get the top four thanks to Murky's persistence, and of course we're doing a ton of damage here on these guys. Continue to poke him, continue to annoy them, and as soon as they get a little bit close, we're just going to basically shoot him back. It looks like Rexar is backing up. I am okay with that decision. Let's go ahead and do that as well. Signal to Murky that he should walk away because he does have 20 gems. And we should be able to handle this. And the enemy team only ate away from a first hand in. But it looks like ETC is the one who's carrying 29. So if you get a kill on him, that'd be huge. It looks like Rexor saying that as a second time. He's doing pretty well. Let's go ahead and give him a random applause. Big shout out to our Rexor player, Equitum. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Uh, pretty good job, sir. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. You're doing all right. It looks like we're gonna try to engage here. Um, here comes the Gravitron bomb. Before, uh, we're not gonna be able to, really be able to do much. Uh, it looks like Nazi was right there. Let's go ahead and just mush him to the side that interrupts the cooldown and we're gonna be able to just come in here and shoot him etc gets trapped in that wall he can't really put it back up because he's already dead we're gonna chase as deep as we can it looks like terror was jumping in but i'm able to pick up a kill let's go ahead and do a little bit of a of a miss there with our penetrating round we're gonna take a lot of damage here come our banshees out actually just switch there on vala switching back on johanna i was gonna use them defensively to scare them off but it looks like she went a little too deep on our friendly team is able to secure the kill Go ahead and send the Banshees back to attack this tower. Just keep them alive to do a little bit of siege damage, because why not? We don't really want it to suicide. Actually, now that they're stealthy, we can actually use them to scout a little bit inside their base. It looks like Falsa right there. We're just going to shoot them for bad manners. And then walk away. Um, not really much I want to do there in the top lane. It looks like we have 9 gems plus 3. This is really nothing, but I'm going to get rid of them, because I don't want to have them. Maybe hit up that healing well so I can top off. Stat-wise, 21,000 hero damage. Keeping close behind Gasless 23. He's doing a really good job, but again, I don't know if it's him being amazing or the enemy team taking a little too much damage from those steroids. And of course, the enemy team Vala, 17,000. 14 kills to 1. The poor unfortunate soul was Gasless. Murky hasn't even died a whole death. He's only died twice. Puts him at 0.5 deaths. Of course, we have those mercenaries in the bottom lane. ETC still in the middle. Which means he's not handing in, which means we're not really worried about it. Let's go ahead and kill the majority of these guys. Continue to accumulate gems, and the enemy team basically conceding the game at this point by not coming out here and trying to force something. Either a hand in, I'm, I don't know why I tried to hand in right there. Maybe it was subconscious. It looks like Johanna is going to try to come in here and basically secure the hand in for our friendly ETC. We're just going to shoot her. We're not going to let her do that. It looks like great engagement there. So we're going to pick up Bullseye. First enemy hit by Penetrain Runner is going to be stunned. We probably want to do that right now on ETC because he's actually quite scary. We do manage to get out of the way, although we did miss that. We're going to engage from behind. The turret is doing a ton of damage. Basically, going to basically shove him in here. Great Gravitron Bomb. Followed by my stun. That's going to be a kill almost immediately. We're going to try to come in here. Oh, great engagement there. We do call out the Banshees, which are going to begin to chase Johanna. We're going to be able to stun her really quickly, and that's going to be yet another kill. And then we're going to send the Banshees after uh, Nazebo, because why not? You know what? Why not, I say. And they're going to begin shooting him. He's going to be uh, basically a little bit worried there. He's going to back away. And I'm going to try to defend these Giants, because, of course, they do see damage. And I think it's important that we try to kill these Towers before we kill the Giants, get the most use out of them as we can. As you can see, we're going to get some more experience further the three-level lead. Man, this game is becoming to be really, really one-sided in quick match. Uh, nowadays, uh, actually, you know, to be fair, in rank, it's, it's, it almost feels just as one-sided. Just sometimes you get stomped, and sometimes you are the one doing the stomping. Looks like we should be able to secure a kill here on the keep, even if we die. Not a big deal. I mean, Rexer has 24 gems. Uh, let's go ahead and suggest that he hand, that he hands in, and then just basically continue to push your punish. It looks like Falsa going really deep there against Zeratul. We're trying to lure them in. Uh, we're not really going to be able to finish the game right now. So might as well just destroy the healing well, just be rude, 
and then walk away. It looks as Herito wants to go turn in, which means we can continue the pressure here. Johanna trying to flank to the side. Maybe she's trying to go in for a turn in. No, she's not. She doesn't have any gems. I forgot we killed her. We're going to jump in here. She, her shield does pop up. The reason why I'm focusing the tank, you might be wondering why I'm doing that, is just to basically get a little bit more damage and force her way back and uh, force that D. If he uses the shield immediately when she first engages us, we're going to go in here and just move Nazeewa back to make sure he stops that nonsense. We're able to retreat, no problem. And of course, we have the next uh, web we were spawning. Murky on the top lane, destroying the last of the fortifications. It's going to allow these pushes to be really strong. Uh, I don't know what to do here. I think we're just going to continue to pressure the enemy team right at their base. There's really not much else of a move to do other than continue pushing methodically. And, of course, we're going to shove in there a little bit. What I really want to do... Oh, great engagement here. The Gravitro Bomb is going to be huge. We're going to be able to pick up a double kill almost immediately thanks to that double stun. And, of course, Puffer Fish and Cleave and just might right-click him to win. And this should be good game. Two members of the enemy team dead. We're going to come in here and try to kill Nazebo. If we can, there go the Banshees. We're going to basically just begin to attack him, just harass him a little bit. Here comes the stun for Misha. My stun and then the second stun in a row. And that is a kill. No problem. We secure the kill, and of course, now it's just a matter of right clicking here in the corner. And that should be a good game. Sadwise, 30, 32,000 hero damage, 37 for uh, the enemy gas. So he did that one time, though. So I guess uh, even though he was the MVP as far as damage goes, we did pretty well. And 91,000 for him as well, siege wise, which is huge, of course, on Zero 58. 21 kills to one. That was quite a stump, but that was Jim Rayner. I hope you enjoyed that video. My name is Al, and I will see you all next time.